for those who have heard the term uh, NNLB or no language left behind, um, NNLB uh, is essentially this giant translation system that we built uh, that translates in and out of 200 languages. Uh, so there is this magic box that can essentially translate uh, no matter how much uh, training data you had to train these systems for each language. Uh, we evaluated all these languages uh, on a data set that we built, and we have the state-of-the-art results for 200 languages, which essentially means we can translate between 40,000 language directions. Uh, we are open sourcing everything that we built, the model, the data, the tools, and we are sharing every, with everyone out there. And this represents like a huge milestone for us in a really long-term journey for us. And I'm happy to talk about some part of that journey if you're interested. Uh, <laughs> we've got a lot to talk about. Let me just process this for a second. That we built the, the world's best uh, 200 language translator. So in one language, out another, in any one of 200 languages, better than anything we know of by, by a lot. And then we're just going to like give it away. Take, take me through both parts of this. Like we'll, take me through the advancements and how we got to where we are how it compares to state of the art, how it compares to human translators. And then I'd love to talk a little bit about sort of our, our philosophy on, on open source and open science. So let's cool. just start with the basics. Where, how did we make this advancement? Okay, uh, maybe just like a quick uh, journey through the MT history, machine translation history. Uh, so machine translation is one of the longstanding NLP problems. It started around like 50s, and uh, that has been a dream for a lot of people essentially since then. Uh, I was involved in various stages of machine translation technologies. When I first started my PhD, we only had uh, rule-based systems, uh, what we called interlingua. So we essentially wrote all these rules to translate all the languages into some intermediate representation, and then you translate out of that representation into another language. And then the statistical models came like uh, around 2000s, and that was like a crazy revolution. Like nobody actually could believe all of a sudden that a machine can translate between languages. And the quality was, really impressive compared to what we had before. And then uh, the next way was what we called phrase-based translation. So we learned how to actually translate phrases from one language to the other. And uh, one of the pioneers of that method, Tilt Kern, is actually at Meta now. He was like one of the founding fathers of that technology. And again, that was a huge leap. Uh, and then, you know, uh, several years later, then the neural revolution came. And again, the same thing, like magic. All of a sudden you could translate in unprecedented ways and we couldn't believe it, like what was happening. As someone who walked through this journey like at different stages and saw how much progress we made, it's just unbelievable. Uh, the recent wave is what we call the multilingual translation systems, right? So previously we had individual systems for every direction that we were working on. And now the new paradigm is, can we actually do this one model that translates between a lot of languages and between a lot of directions? So we put everything together and we essentially uh, train this giant model uh, that learns how to translate from one language to the other. And the underlying idea is that the, this, you know, this black box, this magic, magic box learns the intermediate representation for all these languages and we sort of map into and out of that thing, going back to the interlingual idea. So it's kind of like, you know, this whole uh, journey yeah. going back, but now we're doing this like in an automated way. Uh, the latest system that we built um, is, uh, as I said, like this uh, system that can translate, that can take input in all these 200 languages. Uh, some of them are a lot and some of them are very little in individual uh, languages and directions. You put all of them together and I can tell a bit more about like how the system works uh, in terms of like the mechanics of the system. But the general idea is you essentially input any language and any input and you get the output out of it. So just to get a sense of like, you know, just the progression here, because I, I think this is just is really important for people to benchmark, you know, this, this set of 200 language. So it's actually, so you said it's 200 by 200. So it's 40,000 language pairs. And a language pair means going one direction. So I go from English to German, you know, or German to French. Each one of those is a pair or German to English. Um, and so that ends up being 40,000 different combinations. Start with one of 200, go to one of 200. Um, and uh, what you're saying is, is that, for some portion of them, we're, are, we believe we're approaching, you know, the quality of a, of a human translator and certainly have crossed the threshold of like, you're getting everything you need out of the translation. It's semantically equivalent. And then for a very large portion of them, it's like, it's adequate. It's useful. It's like, you know, if you have a friend along who can translate and kind of gets the gist across, but isn't like a professional translator, it's still better than nothing. 
Um, and that's yep. true for, for a longer tail of this languages. But the fact that we have this for the set of 200 languages, and this is a single system, right? So you can input one sentence from any language and choose an output language. Um, this, that's really, it's really, it's hard to, you know, this is the, I'm gonna date myself, but this is like the Star Trek Universal Translator coming to actual life um, as, as we speak, which is kind of incredible. So I'm sorry, I'm geeking out here for a minute. Um, Let's let's talk a bit about. Um, I want to talk about two things. I want to talk about open research and open source. And I want to talk about like applications to Facebook products. So you mentioned we're going to open source everything, not just write a paper, but the model itself. You know, explain the training. We did this recently for a large language model, OPT one seventy five. You know, can you just take people through why we're doing this? Absolutely. Um... We are working on a really hard problem. Uh, I talked about this multiple times, sorry for repeating myself, but we are working on really hard problems. And I believe that it's a problem that requires a lot of hands. Uh, we believe that, you know, there is not like, you know, a small group of people who are just gonna come and find the magic and, you know, all of a sudden we are gonna solve this difficult problem. We really believe in the power of sharing uh, with the community and essentially fostering an environment where a lot of people can join um, and, uh, you know, so help us solve this problem. We are doing our part in essentially showing the community, uh, you know, how they can make faster progress by sharing the data, by sharing like our recipe for what we did and by sharing our tools, we are hoping that we are gonna enable more people to look into this problem. And that's the beauty of open research, right? So uh, I'm a competitive person. I'd like to be the one who's solving like the bigger problem, but I also believe that it, it goes beyond one person or one group. Uh, we are hoping that we are going to enable more people essentially to dive deeper into this problem. And as a community, as the research community, we are going to come up with better solutions over time. I think that's why we also made a lot of progress in the past, I don't know, 10 years maybe compared to the mm. previous one when this culture really changed. Like in the old days, it was really like a closed research environment, like sharing research or mm. sharing papers, even like papers, details of papers. People were hesitant. And, you know, that sort of blocked progress for a long time. Once we start opening up like more and more as a community, and I think Facebook and Meta played a huge role in fostering that environment as well. Mm. I think things got better. Like now we are helping, we are working together sort of like in, a, in, a, uh, in an environment where almost there are no boundaries and we are learning from each other and we are helping each other to reach something more ambitious. Uh, yeah. As I mentioned before, these are problems that people have been working on for more than 70, 80 years. And we made a lot of progress. And if you look at the, amount of progress that was made maybe in the past 10 years compared to the previous one, it is incredible. And I give a yeah. lot of credit to doing this openly. Well, let's talk about that part. Then let's talk about products. Like what, okay, great. We have this amazing new technology. Um, I'm assuming this is too raw, too big to be running in, you know, production use cases yet. What's the plan to sort of take this or pieces of this and, and put it into production? Yeah. Uh, research to production is like an area that I personally cared a lot about and I'm super ambitious. So like we made a lot of progress in research, but I think what makes this really impressive at Meta is that we actually take this research to production pretty quickly. That was like our track record uh, for a long time and we are going to keep doing that here. That's what's happening here as well. So we are looking into productization maybe in two areas, internal and external. Let me start with the external part. So we partnered with Wikimedia to actually use these translations to enable uh, content uh, generation for new languages that Wikipedia did not support before. Uh, so mm. this is now in use for about 20 languages uh, by the Wikipedia editors, and they can create essentially content in these 20 new languages. And that is huge. That's like, awesome. you know, I think we talked about this before. English has a, uh, has a lot of um, content available on Wikipedia, like more than 6 million pages available. But not every language is as lucky as English. Like there are languages where there are like 50 million speakers, but you only see like maybe 3,000 uh, Wikipedia pages. Our goal is yeah. to be able to change that. Uh, by providing these services to Wikipedia editors, we are hoping that there are going to be more content that has, that's going to be generated on Wikipedia. So it's the, just the first step. You know, the end goal is essentially have everything available in every language on Wikipedia. How awesome that would be, right? But I'm also excited how the translation systems now are being essentially deployed. Uh, on Facebook, the product, and on Instagram yeah. as well. Uh, we previously deployed multilingual systems, uh, but now we have much better versions of it. Uh, we are starting with three essentially big areas. Um, so we have almost like three multilingual systems that are retrained on Facebook-specific data. So we are not just taking the, you know, the big model and putting it into production. We cannot do it for a lot of reasons, yeah. but we know how to do that. Like 
for the other data that we have. So we are going to do that. And they are going to be deployed uh, very soon on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, again, the dream is to replace everything that we have with one model going forward. Uh, when I was uh, preparing for this, I found a post that I made like a few years ago saying we are going to go to one multilingual model uh, next year. Uh, I was a bit more optimistic than maybe I should have been, <laughs> but uh, eventually we're going to get there. Um, like that's why I think this makes me extra excited. It's not just about like innovating and taking the research to the next level, but it's also showing that it's actually helping people. That's why we are here. We are here to solve real problems and these are helping us solve real problems. Well, let me ask you this and take you a bit into the future because the, the science and the research is, is progressing at a, at a really rapid clip. We're also working on this exciting technologies in, in AR and VR. We're going to be building mobile compute you know, on the go as I'm moving around in the world. You know, and one of the things that I'd love to see is sort of live captioning and auto translation of anything. So if I travel to a foreign country, I can walk around with, with glasses on, talk to people, and just in real time, I have a translation showing up in my, my field of view. Give me a sense of, you know, 10 years, 20 years, five years. Do you, when do you think this sort of project is tractable? Uh, as I said before, like uh, I am very ambitious when I'm setting goals. So uh, maybe I'm a bit more optimistic, but I am thinking that, you know, in a few years or so, we are going to get to a world where what we call, uh, we are going to build what we call like seamless communication. So it's not just like, you know, looking and seeing captioning. It's really going to metaverse and essentially communicating with everyone, uh, accessing everything in a language that you can understand. And that whole thing is like seamless. Um, I love the term that Angela Fenn came up with and I, I keep repeating everywhere, like seamless communication, meaning uh, all modalities, right? So you don't actually make a distinction between text, yeah. speech, video, body language and hand tracking, et cetera. It works for everyone, uh, like all over the world. It works for every language. So you don't even realize that like people are maybe speaking different languages or coming from different places. Yeah. It's that seamless. So that's the dream. And um, I am very optimistic. Like, I don't think it's going to take 10 years or 20 years to get there. I think we made a lot of progress. Uh, and like in, in a few years or so, I think we are going to see like really good applications of this technology. I mean, I, I, think, I think people really miss the power of AI to equalize opportunity for people around the world. Because let's just take two things we talked about here and put them together, which is, you know, if you grew up and didn't have access to the internet or, or did, but didn't speak and read English well, then you don't have access to the 6 million articles in Wikipedia, lots of educational resources on Coursera, et cetera. And so you're fundamentally have access to less information than someone who happens to grow up speaking, reading English, right? Um, and AI translation can sort of start to level that information playing field. But then there's a second part, which is collaboration and communication with other people. If I'm going into a workplace where I don't speak the native language of my coworkers, like it's harder for me to get my job done. And if AI translation systems can really get this good, then it can equalize it so that everyone can communicate with anyone, can consume any information on the internet. And it's just this great like uplift of opportunity for people around the world. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I just, I can't think of anything that's that's more broadly going to benefit a lot of people around the world. This is awesome. Yeah. One of the driving themes for us is absolutely inclusion and equity. We believe that, you know, by giving a chance to everyone out there to have access to the same resources and same opportunities, that's going to change the world. And uh, like with this project and on several language technologies that we are building, that is like one of the biggest goals. How do we actually bring, um, how do we level um, or how do we come up with equal essentially opportunity for everyone out there? Uh, how do we reduce that gap? You talked about like some people maybe not having that opportunity. I was one of those people. I grew up in a place where I didn't actually have access to a lot of things. And over time, you actually see the power of having access to information. Uh, I was one of the privileged ones. I was one of the lucky ones who had more access to information over time and who had more access to opportunities. But I'm lucky. And we want to make sure that everyone out there is also like as lucky as I got. And it's up to us. Like we build these technologies, we deliver them to people, and they have equal opportunities. Uh, we believe in open sourcing for the same reason, but we also believe in building these technologies like for that particular reason. Uh, so if I summarize like why we are doing all of this, maybe if I pick like one word, that's inclusion, uh, that's equity. I mean, I can't think of a better place to end. So we're going to we're going to end there. Thank you, Basil. Thank you for the work you're doing. Uh, you, you, you've been championing this work for years and years and this sort of work happens, doesn't happen without people like you just pushing it forward. So thanks for doing this work. Thanks for coming on to Shrep Tech this week.
Thank you so much. I should also say that, uh, like you have been like a big sponsor of this technology for several years. And uh, I am personally grateful for that. Uh, it requires like building the right environment to build some of these technologies, especially in the long term. I know you're a big believer in the long term research. Uh, great things take time. So that's one of my favorite t-shirts that I got from Yosemite uh, talking about a sequoia tree, right? Great things take time. And yeah, it's, this is a great example of great things taking a lot of time. You give the right people uh, the opportunity to do great things and they do. We have two amazing leaders uh, on this project, Angela Fan and Sergey Edinov. Essentially, you empower those people, you give them what you need, and they unlock the world for you. Uh, I think we should keep doing this. Uh, Excel is a great place that you guys, you know, essentially helped us build and enabled us to do more. And, and NLB is like one of the first products of that effort. Uh, I hope we can uh, continue doing this and I, I believe that we are going to generate more and more wins uh, going forward. Thank you so much again. Mm -hmm.